Daniel chapter 1. And verse 11. Daniel has respectfully challenged the government. And what the king's trying to do, he's trying to get the Hebrew out of the Hebrews. He wants them to be Babylonians. Like the public school system in America wants you to be an evolutionist. They don't want you to be a creation. So, what's going on now is they've changed their names. They're trying to change their diet. And the diet is a heathen Gentile diet, which would probably go against the law, which they're still under the law even in Babylon. And I wonder if the king knows this. Maybe if I change their name, maybe if I have them eat something they're not supposed to eat, and maybe to be this, I mean, God's already angry with them because here they are. I've got half of the temple stuff here. So Daniel respectfully goes up to the man that's in charge, the third in, in charge, because you, you got a eunuch, you got a prince of the eunuchs, and then you got the master of the eunuchs who are in charge of these Hebrews. And he says, well, We can't eat that food, we can't drink that wine. If you would please give us some pulse, kind of a beans, maybe some meat, maybe it changes every day, meal and water. And the eunuch is scratching his head, well, you know. <laughs> I fear the king. He's going to chop my neck off. You know, the things with these kings, and not just in the Middle East, all over, these kings in the past, you would not do what you do to the President of the United States and still be living. Christians. Oh, I don't know what their names are. There's some name. there, there was one of them, those kings. He didn't like his wife. He killed her and got another one. Didn't like her. He chopped her head off and got another. And God says in Romans chapter 13, they're the powers that be. I set them in off. You better behave them. If you don't, you better fear the government, which Christians don't today. Daniel is respectful. And there's a there's a him, a child, so dare to be a Daniel. Well, you can't be a Daniel when you're despising the government. Because Daniel is respectful to the Babylonian government as Peter and Paul were respectful to the government under Nero. So he goes up to the, the man that's in charge, it's under the case, and can we have some pulse in water? And the eunuch is like, oh man, you know, if I disobey my king, <laughs> off with my neck. And Daniel says, I'll tell you what, in verse 12, prove thy servants. Look at servants. I am your servant. I will do what you tell me to do. Not slave. Slave is forceful. Servant is, I will do it gladly. Christians are servants to God because they want to do it. If you are a slave to God and Jesus Christ by your church, you're doing it wrong. I beseech you. I, that's a word that Paul was saying. I beseech you. I, I beg you. Listen to me. Ten days. Let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. I don't know why, where he got 10 days. I don't know why he didn't say seven. But 10 days. 10 is a Gentile number. Do you know why Daniel's not in, uh, let me get here, the Navin, the books of the prophets, the Jewish layout of their Bible, that he's actually in the Ketchavin? 
the writing? I mean, yeah, the writings. Because Daniel's primary Gentile, and you know how the, that guy. Okay, he may be Jewish. He's dealing with the Gentiles. Stick him over there. That's the prejudice that the Jews have for the Gentiles. You filthy, rotten dog. Do you realize what Jesus called that, that woman that was a Gentile? Go tell that dog. Put it in the common language. Put that in a modern language in your Bibles. The, the female dog, you put that in your mouth. The bitch, tell him. <gasps> That's a female dog. You put that in your modern, up-to-date Bibles, and you show me the chapter and verse where it is, I'll look it up and I'll put it on PowerPoint. But Daniel's respect, because give us 10 days and give us this pulse, and I explained to it last night, pulse is, it's beans, it's maybe has meat, it's a different kind of word for a different kind of what's in it. There is really no English word for it. Then let our countenance, let our face be looked upon before thee. The countenance of the children that eat the portion of the king's meat, and as thou seest, deal with the service. All right. Let them eat the king's meat and wine. Let us have pulse and water. After 10 days, come look at us. At the end of 10 days, there comes this appeared fairer. They had color in them. And fatter in flesh, they were healthier than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Now listen. I don't know if that was a miracle and sign of God for the Jews require a sign. Or that the Gentile food was so bad it just was unhealthy. Now, there are people I've heard, I'll say, you know, and they tell you to eat pork. It's really not healthy. I don't know. Because I know people who have bacon every day of their life and the bacon grease, and they're doing pretty well. They're going to die no matter what. Now, eat sensibly. Don't have dessert three times a day. So the children were healthier under Daniel. And I'm going to assume by what we read that in all in actuality, it was probably only Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah that ate the pulse, I wonder. Because later on, we're going to call to the image. And Daniel had his time up at the plate, coming up, chapter 2. Now it's time for Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah to step up the plate. And they're going to be the only three sore thumbs are going to stand up against the government respectfully. That's one word you got to put with Daniel. Respectfully. Because Paul says in one of his letters, I greet you, tell this person I greet you, I greet you. And those of Caesar's house, or Herod's house or Caesar's house, I forget which one. Paul is writing to a church and hey, listen, I've been in the palace, and I'm not talking about Las Vegas. And the people here in the palace, they say, hi. Tell them, tell them, tell them I said hello, will you, Paul? Because there are Christians in the palace of Herod or, or Caesar. Figure which name. I guarantee by the end of Daniel's life, I guarantee there are Babylonians that looked at Daniel and said, hey, I want your God. And as for the four children, see? Children. They're not adults. God gave them knowledge. How to do what to do. 
and the skill of learning and wisdom. Wisdom is how to apply the knowledge. I know that I have here somewhere, I'm going to say a pencil, but I have a pen. I know it's a pen. Look, it's a good pen. It's got a little clicker thing. It's got a thing I put in my pocket. It's got a little ink ball. It's not a pencil. I was looking for a pencil. I ain't got a pencil. I know the difference between a pen and a pencil. That does me a lot of good. Because if some people can pick up this pen and respectfully, what for whatever reason, they wouldn't know how to use it. Maybe they never seen a pen. Maybe they ain't got the mindset to use a pen. They know, hey, that's a pen. And the wisdom is how to take the pen and click it and start writing. And Daniel had wisdom, understanding. Understanding in the Bible is, okay, uh, here's a pen. I know it's a pen. I know how to use a pen. I can write words. I can make little marks. I can draw pictures. Now I'm going to take what I know, how I know to do it, and I'm going to use it for the glory of God. I'm going to send somebody a letter. I'm going to write something from the Bible and give it to something. For God's glory. But Daniel had understanding in visions and dreams. We're going to see a dream coming up in chapter 2. And Daniel's going to know and understand that dream to tell to the king that nobody else knows. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in. And that's over back in oh, three years, verse 5. And the king appointed them daily provision of the king's meat and the wine, which he drank, so nourished them three years, that at the end, there they might stand before the king. All right, so here's the food. Here's three years. All right, here's the three years, but they haven't been eating the king's food. I want if Nebuchadnezzar knew that. Why did Daniel go against the king's food? That's another whole subject right now. Because he's to obey his God. He's to obey the law as the Jews to obey the law, even in Babylon. And the law states no pork, no certain seafood he can't eat. There's certain animals he can't eat. He's living to the law. So under God, if Daniel gets in trouble by the government, under God, Daniel's protected, but he's got to take the beating. If there's a beating to be taken. Now, Peter and John are told by the, by the Senate, don't mention Jesus. I've been told, don't mention Jesus and take on the beach. And if you mention Jesus, we're going to put them in jail and they get twice a beating. Why did you preach Jesus when we told you not to? Because we ought to obey God more than man. Well, we're going to beat you. Well, so be it. Where do you want me to bend over? And that's the story of Christians in the church age. Of the history of the church. I'm going to do what God told me to do. All right, then put me on the faggots and burn me. Lord, may I sing a Bible hymn or may I preach the Bible until the flames consume me. Daniel has a thing. Here is meat or food you cannot eat under the law and give you the law. Leviticus 13. Or 12, excuse me. 11. Leviticus 11. Jesus told the disciples, go in the world and preach the gospel. Daniel, this is the meat you're going to eat. I can't do it. The law says not to. But if you disobey the king, I am in trouble. I'll tell you what. Give us 10 days. Give us what food we can eat, kosher food, 
And we'll try it out. How's that sound? And we don't know what the, what the story would have been if it didn't happen because it happened. <laughs> okay, here we are. It worked out. God worked it out. John and Peter don't preach the name of Jesus. They went out and preached the name of Jesus. They were arrested and they were beaten. Now the thing comes to today. I'm not taking the vaccine. I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to lose my job. And how wicked Biden is for making us quit and, and having us lose our job because of the vaccine. Please give me a book, a chapter, any verse, write it down and show me where the Bible says you do not take a vaccine. Well, you know, the vaccine does this, and you end up in a hospital, and you end up worse as a vaccine, and the vaccine does this, and the vaccine 666. I've had both vaccines, and I've had the booster shot. And I didn't end up in the hospital. I did not get sick. But we're going to lose our freedom. You got no freedom. You had no freedom since the day you were born. There are certain things that your parents had to do with you as a child growing up. And if they didn't do what, what they were supposed to do, they were taking you away. You have no freedom. Go out in the front yard, front yard of your house and build yourself a, a child's playhouse with no permits. And see how far you get. Go out and put a bunch of junk on your front lawn and have a sign that says yard sale and sell everything for a dollar and see how quick the authorities come knocking on you where is the permit. Now listen, I'm not against gun. You want to go get yourself a gun? That's perfectly fine. All I say is you get the class. You do the classes, you get yourself a gun, buy yourself a gun and carry your gun without a permit and get caught by the police. No freedom. Drive a car without a license. Legally, without a license. You can't do it. Well, I mean, I could drive a car without a license. Legally? Go to your superstore and buy yourself a cart full of groceries and pay no taxes. I read now the IRS wants to go after people for a certain amount of money they make over their internet. And I hear Christians and I see them on Facebook. Oh, our freedom. Oh, the, 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 the chaos of having to take the, 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 the vaccine and, and oh, making us do. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the scripture with that. And I bet you if the government said Bibles are illegal. And the mention of the name of Jesus Christ is illegal. I bet none of you would speak up. Because you probably don't have a Bible, and you probably don't mention the name of Jesus. I have the vaccine. I've had the two shots. I'm going to go out in the streets. I'm going to mention Jesus. I'm going to upset a whole bunch of people. I have dealt with the police department. I have dealt with the city lawyers. I have dealt with the people in charge of Daytona Beach. And I treated them all with respect. And I've even had the lawyer for the police department tell my lawyer to tell me, I, I'm completely thankful for how your guy handled that situation. I am thankful he didn't lose his temper. He didn't lose it. He walked away and told my police officer, if, if I am in the wrong, I am sorry. But if I'm in the right and my lawyer says I'm doing right, I'll be back next week.
I've seen some people, they don't treat the authorities with respect. We were assaulted by the police. Oh, the police mistreated. You deserved it. And look what God did to these men. Look what God did to, to Peter and John. They got out. And they got out preaching the word. Stephen was the first to die as a martyr. Then Paul got saved. Oh, we got taxes, and we got to have another tea party, and we got to complain because we got taxes. And it was taxation that God told the Roman government, you better tax those Jews. You better tax them in the city where their family is, because that's what brought Joseph and Mary to Bethlehem so Jesus would be born according to the Bible. Because you know what? God, there's no way, there's no way that Joseph is going to take his wife to Bethlehem unless I make it a law. And God told the Roman government, hey, I, I, I need something from you. What's that? All right, you're not going to listen to me? Satan, will you tell your people to, to make a law for taxes? <laughs> yes, tax the Jews. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bye. Maybe God's testing his church. President Biden? Or maybe Satan, will you tell Biden? I don't know. I don't know. I don't I know the guy's a Catholic, but will you tell him to make a mandate that everybody needs to be vaccinated? Okay. I have a law, well, not a law, but every person is gonna be vac vaccinated. If you don't get vaccinated, you can lose your job. How many profession Christians are the ones that lost their job? Oh, Lord God, we need money. Oh, Lord God, we can't. What's wrong with the vaccine? Oh, it's going to be the 666. Haven't you studied the Bible? 666 doesn't bother the church age. Well, my preacher. Well, yeah, your preacher's wrong. Why don't you check them out in the scripture? <laughs> My friend says a prophecy to six. Hey, your friend don't know the Bible. Read the Bible. The Bible. You know what the problem with these people that, oh, we got freedom. We can't do this. We can't do that. Oh, you don't know your Bible. Don't profess to be a Christian because you're a Bible illiterate. As for these four children, God gave them the knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. They didn't go to BU, Babylon University. They didn't go to BBU, Babylonian Baptist University. You know where that knowledge and skill of wisdom and understanding came from? You studied your Bible? It comes from the Holy Spirit. Did not Jesus said the Holy Spirit will teach you all things and remind you all things? Has it not said in the Old Testament that you don't read? The Spirit gave them. Now, visions are not the same as dreams. Did you get that? You see, visions and dreams. I know that Johanna, comma, and all that in Titus 2.13, it says God and Jesus Christ, the blessed, they're the one in the same. But if you got black and white, they're not the same. Though the world will try to tell you black is white and white is black, they don't know what they're talking about. There's a difference between vision and dream. You got to study the Bible and you got to actually study the English <laughs> in conjunctions. Conjunction, conjunction, what's your function? Close the Bible and open the TV set. The TV. I watched the TV. <clears throat> I watched a, a channel on history when I was in the hospital all about Christmas. It was totally, absolutely wrong. I ain't going to trust what they say. 
Now, at the end of the days, see the, see the end, the end? It's a, it's a particular word of Daniel, the end, because it points us to the end days. The events of Daniel and the events of, of Exodus are going to happen again. There will be Jews in the tribulation period, and they're going to have before. You're going to eat the Gentile food, the non kosher food, or you're going to die. Uh uh, not us. And there's going to be some Gentiles. Is this kosher? Yes, it is. You want some? Oh, yeah, I really loved it. Here, have some of this. You mean that, that's good to your diet? Yes, yes. I thank you very much. And those Gentiles will get in the millennium by helping the Jews, and they don't even know what they're doing. That the king had said he should bring them in the three years, and the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Here they are. And the king commended them, or communed with them, talked with them, asked some questions. Yeah, can you imagine that moment there? Yeah, maybe Daniel, Hananiah, or... So what do you think of my bacon? <laughs> Was my wine good? You know, all my wine is dedicated to Tamas. And later on, there'll be Baptist Catholic. Happy Tamas to you. Happy Tamas to you. Happy Tamas to you. Birthday present for Jesus. Then you said, no! Your honorship, your kingship, your... we didn't have your million. Well, Daniel, you tell me you haven't read the book of Daniel and think that Daniel did not keep his mouth shut? You mean the gripe and complaint of everybody else? We're going to have pulse again. Pulse, thanks to Daniel. We're going to pulse, 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 pulse. That didn't reach to the king? The gripe and complaining of the Baptists? You know, the Baptists gripe and complain. And the king communed with them, and among them all, so they were all there, were found none like, okay, all these, we don't know how many were there, but found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mashiel, and Azariah. Four. All the rest of the masses failed. There's that one guy in our church. I, I, oh, he's so proper. He's so oh, holier than now. And we can't have this. We can't have that. We can't do this. We can't do that. Why can't we eat bacon because of Daniel? And God's up in heaven. I like that. You keep telling them Easter's wrong. I know they're not listening. You keep telling them. I like that. I know they're brown brushing you. I know they're lip smacking you. I know they're talking behind your back. You wait till we all get to the judgment seat of Christ. By the way, some of those are, that are going against you are not going to end up at the judgment seat of Christ. They're going to end up at the great white throne judgment thinking they were going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. How's that? And you even witness to them. Four Always go with the minority, not the majority. Broad is the way that leads to destruction and narrows the gate that leads to life. When all the Baptist churches are having and doing it, I ain't doing it. Now, maybe way back when, because things get bad as they grow. Maybe vacation Bibles was right and done properly way back. It ain't done properly today. You want to ask the Bible Baptist Church that over-decorated their church? And the pastor said, don't come back? Why? Because I committed adultery against my wife? No. Because I stole money? No. 
You were caught with a harlot? No. Because I said I'm not going to be in that church to the week after VBS and those decorations taken down. Don't come back here. Oh, yeah. Two weeks later, I got a letter in the mail. Oh, blah, blah, 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 blah. And two of those charges were false. I feel good. I try to make things right with that chair and go, oh, blah, 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 oh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, bye. I never dealt with the issue about the VBS. Okay. You stick with your pride. Pride is a sin. And mocking God's marriage. Now the end of the days that the king said on, he should bring them in. And the king communed with them. Among them was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mashiach, and Azariah. Therefore they stood they before the king. They are not only in the palace. They are in the throne room. Like Joseph would have been. Even that moment, that moment that Nebuchadnezzar is sitting on the throne. This is a boring day. Oh, to be king, 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 king. Hey, Daniel. Come over here. How's it going? Pretty good, king. Just doing some work here, doing things. Oh, really? You're not bored? <laughs> I'm bored. You know... Daniel, I had to send more troops into Jerusalem. From what I hear, they're getting closer and closer. And Jerusalem's going to be wiped out pretty soon. I hear about this man named Jeremiah. He's upsetting a whole bunch of people over there for some reason. You hear that man Ezekiel? You hear the things he's talking about? Oh, you agree with him? Oh, okay. Well, I ask you to eat, but you don't eat my food. Too bad. No, I don't want no pulse, Daniel. You can eat that. I won't. I'd rather have my baby. I suppose we're not going to see you on that star day, huh? You know? Yeah, okay. Okay, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it what I believe is right. I heard a pastor say. Danny was right. The king was wrong. They stood before the king. Where the king was, there is Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Ezra. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them. Can you imagine? Daniel, come here. Yes. These two women in front of me. Well, their, their child went in the swimming pool and drowned. And one said they were supposed to be watching the kid. And the other one said they weren't supposed to watch the kid. I don't know who's guilty here. You want to help me with this one? Imagine this one. Meshiel, come here. Where's Daniel? Okay, we're about to destroy Jerusalem. Here's my commander-in-chief of the army. We're going to, we're, this is it. We're going to go, and it's going to be destroyed. I heard that there's this one man named Jeremiah is in jail. What shall I do with him? Oh, he's a prophet of God, and God obeys him, and, and, and he's... Wouldn't that have been interesting?
He found them ten times, there's that ten again, Gentile, better than all the magicians. Uh-oh. Magicians. The Magi. Now that's not the guy who pulls the hat out of the rabbit. Oh, I want to see him pull a hat out of a rabbit. Never mind a hat out the rabbit out of the hat. These are the men. How come the Magi knew the approximate time that Jesus would have been born within two years? They knew what the proper star was. And all Israel knew nothing. And astrologers, now these and these almost brought together. They're looking at the heavens. You know the last time we read about Babylon? Really? I can't remember the king's name, but he's sick with boils. He says, Isaiah, I'm going to die. He cried, and God says, I'm going to give him 15 more years. Really? What sign shall I get that this is going to happen, Isaiah? Well, well we're going to turn the sundial. Oh, cool. Ten degrees. Oh, there's that ten again. And one day they're sitting there, and the stargazers and the astrologers and the magicians looking at the skies and about. What was that? We just lost 10 minutes, and it was not daylight savings time. What on earth can happen for this? Well, I'll tell you what. What? we got to go to that God in Jerusalem and find out from, from that Jehovah what happened. And by the way, the king gave us a complete shopping list while we were there of everything that's in Babylon. I mean, everything that's in Jerusalem that needs to come to Babylon and all that was in the temple. So when, so when this happened, Nebuchadnezzar has a list for his army. Hey, we got this long time ago from King Ahaz. Make sure you get everything that's on the list. Did you get everything on the list? No, sir. Why not? We couldn't find the ark. What? We couldn't find the ark. Well, call in Harrison Ford and get him out there to go find the lost ark. Oh, he's not born yet? Okay. Call John the Apostle. The ark is in heaven. These are people that looked at the sky and they did, I mean, they tried to do uh, Pharaoh's magicians I actually did turn the water into blood. I think they made the frogs. I don't think they made the lice. But there's also, you know, the the you know illumination <laughs> that were in all his realm. These boys were smarter with no college degree than the scholars in Nebuchadnezzar's time. So then when that little preacher boy come, oh, he come from nowhere, he's got no potential on that, he's probably better than what you got. I can tell you the scriptures say that that blood on Jesus' robe at the second advent is surely not his blood. I can give you Bible verses. When you said to, well, my instructor, my person, my old preacher told me it was the blood of Jesus. You want his name? Just cross over to Jordan. And Daniel, now watch this one. Daniel continued even in the first year of King Cyrus. All right, what were the kings? Nebuchadnezzar. Belshazzar, because his father was away at battle. But, all right, a ruler. Darius, the Medes, and Cyrus of the Persians. He is there for four kings. Even during the, the collapse of the Babylon Empire, 
Daniel survives. Jeremiah survives the collapse of Jerusalem and the temple and Judah. Joseph survived the complete fallout of there's no food. Lot survived when all the city is turned to brimstone and fire. That's a little extra side. That's a PS, verse 21. All right, I'm going 19, 18, 17, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh, by the, by the way, PS, Daniel outlasts all these people. That's a remarkable statement. And he's put in authority under Dyrus and Cyrus. Still. <laughs> 